So I wasted hours of my life trying to get metal sleeves out of leaf springs this week. And it turns out if you do it correctly or the right way, it should only take about five minutes a leaf spring. So live and learn. Okay guys, so you already kind of got the gist that I wasted a lot of time this week trying to push metal sleeves out of my leaf springs. But I did get the job done and they are close to being finished up. Uh, just got to get the bushings in and then they will be ready to go and get put back on the car. A lot of what else I did this week I was unable to film, but I can assure you that I did get a lot of progress done on the car. I opted not to do a weekly startup this week just because I felt like there wasn't enough um, done or for me to show you at that particular point in time to justify uploading a video for you guys. So, let me show you how everything turned out with the rear end um, and the drive shaft and all that stuff and then we will talk about uh, how things are going. What the internet claims is the cheapest degreaser you can get. Now I've used this on my engine before in an earlier video. We're gonna see how it does on the rear end. This may end up being an effective grass killer too. Would not be surprised. We got lots painted here today. Got the leaf springs done, the shock mounting plates done, and the rear end is finished up, which I'm happy with. So here is how the drive shaft, the leaf springs, and the rear end turned out. And I am very happy with all of this. If you look at it, I mean, it's one of those things where some people might say good from far, far from good, because you know I didn't sand it smooth. I just wanted to get all the loose rust off of it and get this thing coated in high temp rust oleum paint just to jazz it up a little bit. The pinion seal, as you guys know, has been replaced. The gasket has been now been replaced and this is how the whole thing looks. So, I'm happy with that. We're calling that done. Shock plates have been painted. Um, I have the new shocks. I might actually paint these because I don't know how I feel about having these red shocks underneath the car. I might just do them like a silver color or something, I don't know. Not sure. Uh, and here are how the leaf springs turned out. Now, one mistake I made with these was I, I didn't actually realize that these, the metal sleeves in here needed to come out until after I painted them. So I painted them and then I wrestled with them to get those sleeves out and they got pretty boogered up, so I'm gonna have to touch those up. Speaking of which, I'm not kidding when I say that I probably spent like two or three hours on one of these sleeves to only not have it budge. And when I was doing this, I thought about the idea of sticking a Sawzall in there and maybe trying to cut it a little bit, but it just seemed like a bad idea at the time. Fortunately, I came to my senses and I hopped onto YouTube. And I found a video, and I'll put the link in the description, of a guy that did just that. You cut two slits in the sleeve with a sawzall. You pop that section out, and then you're able to fold it in on itself, pop it right out. You should have the job done in like five to 10 minutes, realistically. Yep. There it is. I did film a tutorial of cutting those metal sleeves out because I only found one on YouTube. So I am gonna, I did film that and I'm gonna throw that up. And I also have the tutorial on how I replace that pinion gear that I will be throwing up, but they're gonna go in the tutorial section. So if you guys see them pop up and you're like, what is this? It's not gonna be a regular episode. They're just gonna be tutorials. I also made a lot of progress underneath the car. And, um, we should, I'm getting very close to having that ready to coat with the POR15, the POR15. And once that's done and cured, we can reassemble the back end of the car, get it back down on the ground and assess 
um, what we're gonna do next. I'm thinking that I may address the doors next because I know we talked about doing the fenders in the front clip, but, and even the, the driver's side floor pan, I'm not, I mean, I'm much more comfortable with my welding, but I still might wanna do a little bit more practicing before I take that on. But before you do the work on the quarter panels and the fenders, you wanna make sure your doors are aligned and in good shape so that all your body lines match up whenever you're doing the work on the fenders and the quarter panels. So that's why I might actually do the doors next. Also, the doors don't, um, this one would be the easiest door, the passenger side door, because it doesn't require a whole lot. The driver's side door is a little rougher. It's the one that is off of the 66 Mustang. And you can see that this has had, someone has tried to do work to this. It's got holes from trying to pull dents out. So this one could be some good practice on body working and using filler and stuff like that. Basically my point is this. Although I haven't had a lot to show you guys in the recent episodes, there is a lot of progress getting done on the 65 and we are moving along. Unfortunately, due to the nature of what I was doing this week, I just haven't had a whole lot to show you guys or update you on because it was a lot of work to do for, I guess, little things to cross off the list. Anyway, I probably will do a weekly startup this week, but don't hold me to it. If not, I will see you guys for next week's episode. And until then, take care.